Uh, let's start, Kevin and Andrew, with this news overnight. Julian Assange. <clears throat> It will take a lot of people by surprise. Look us by surprise, actually. Yeah. That, you yeah. know, that there was a, you know, we thought that the US were after him for many years. They were absolutely determined to put him in a US court. About a few months ago, we heard whispers that Australia had got involved and Biden was considering a request yeah. from Australia. And now overnight, it seems that he's been released and there's been some kind of plea deal. Yeah, we don't know the full detail, but it sounds like he's a free man. He's mm. uh, he's out of prison. He was in Belmarsh for, I think, four or five years. Five years five in Belmarsh. Years. Before that, he was in he the locked Ecuadorian himself in there. embassy for almost ten but, years. But he overstayed his welcome to the point where they literally... Well, he fell out with them, didn't he? He didn't did. He? Yeah. And they threw him out. And then he ended <laughs> up in prison. I don't think he's a very nice character, to be honest, but he has... He was accused by the Americans of betrayal of their intelligence service on a massive but scale. But, Kevin, he hang calls... On, he, hang on. Mm, he, they also mm, said mm, that his actions in putting all those WikiLeaks in the public domain um, led to the deaths of intelligence officers. Now, he's always denied that, his supporters have always denied it, but that's been the most serious charge against him. That, that, that was... That was, as you quite rightly say, disputed by his defence case. But, look, he, he put into the open that crimes were committed by the US military in Iraq and Afghanistan. Mm. And I think that is in the public interest. That was his defence all the way. And the fact he could have been extradited, given a life term, was a threat to every journalist mm. in, the, in the UK. We have a one-way extradition treaty with the US. It's people go from the UK to the US, they don't <coughs> go from the US to the UK. I think that was wrong. He's done 12 years... So he, I think well, he's, I think he it, served, he served his time. was his own choice. He, just, yeah, he has not just handled, it, he has not speed, handled though, it well. Just to bring people up to speed, though, these allegations of, 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 of the, some of the documents that he released through the WikiLeaks were pretty serious, weren't they? They were, in some cases, tens of thousands of Iraq, Iraqis who had been captured by the Iraqis and abused. The US yeah. military were informed about it but decided not to make any further investigations. Now, he released those documents. That's pretty... Uh, you know, strong evidence to suggest that. And then, of course, there were videos from the helicopter. We no, remember no, that that's in right. In 2007, is it 26 civilians? Yeah, which, which, he, yeah, which uh, civilians, including children, And that killed. was a US helicopter. Yeah, it, it was. So I, I always had huge sympathy with him there. Where I thought he got it absolutely wrong mm -hmm. were two women made uh, allegations, sexual allegations against him in Sweden, and they were denigrated by his supporters, and he did not go to Sweden no, to answer those charges. Now, I think that... He thought he would have a better chance of fighting uh, extradition from the UK than Sweden, because the Sweden at the time had a right-wing government. I think he made a very bad call about that, but he should have... You know, just the principle, you should have gone to Sweden to answer those ca cases. Mm. His, his supporters claimed yeah. to have put up jobs. I'm, I'm sorry, it, there was a terrible smearing of the OK, women. Sweden uh, dropped the investigation. There's the time limitation, yeah. uh, certainly, on one of them. Yeah. Um, let's talk to Alistair Campbell. Hello. Uh, you were there at the heart of government at the time of these conflicts, of course, Iraq and Afghanistan. Yeah. So what do you make of what's happened uh, to well, June I th I Assange? Think... Was he a threat to I national think... security? I th I th look, I, I think so. I th I th you're seeing the, the difference of view here between Andrew, who clearly thinks he is, and Kevin, who sees him more as a journalist, rather than the kind of very anti-American, very anti-West political activist. And I think we... OK, people can sniff about intelligence and so forth, but when you're talking about putting as much information into the public domain as he did, having got it through whatever means, and when we still don't really know the means by which it was secured, then you are, in my view, not the person to make the judgment as to whether that is going to put people's lives at risk. Lives at risk. Now, I suspect right now most of his supporters will be feeling relieved, possibly feeling that he's, that he's got away with it, but, as Kevin and Andrew say, he spent a lot of time in custody already. Mm. The, the thing is that, you know, as we've discussed, some of these are incidents which, where it seems people were not held accountable... Yeah, I, ..for I crimes that. that were committed. No, I understand There was that. no prospect of them being held accountable, atrocities being committed. And so perhaps he would say, you know, it's the duty of journalism to expose that. Yeah, I'm sure he would, but I think that if, 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 if Kevin, for example, on the Daily Mirror had mm. had, had all that stuff hand, handed to him, I don't think the Daily Mirror, which I worked for for many years, would have just felt it was OK yeah. then to splurge the whole lot out there with names of agents, with names of people who were involved with those agents. I think, it, I think you've got... To, if you're a journalist, I think there are certain journalistic things yeah. you have to do. Because, Alison, he jumped. 
I mean, millions of documents and names onto files. They weren't mm -hmm. sifted, they weren't gone through with a journalistic eye, and that's why the, the US can say, hang on, what he did definitely led to deaths of, of agents doing their job in the field and jeopardised the lives of many others and had to withdraw very soon, because it was just a great dump of material. It, it, was a, it was a data dump. Again, he disputes people... Uh, dying as a result, but some certainly had to go into hiding. Mm. But the Guardian newspaper, which was the, the UK link mm. to the data dump, did go through and, yeah. and not publish everything because they were afraid that if you put the information in the, mm. in the public domain, then people would be would be killed in Afghanistan and right and elsewhere. So, mm. look, I mean, he's, he's not a saint, but I don't think he should have been treated as a sinner. Mm. And I really kick back against the idea of the leaker gets punished, but those who perpetrated mm. crimes aren't held accountable I mean, and there is a cover-up. Here in the UK in 2008, he published names, 13,000 members of the British National Party who were at yeah. that time calling for a ban of Muslims from Muslim countries. Now, with all the immigration debate and the cultural mm. wars that are going on now, if someone had done that today, we'd probably treat that quite seriously and that would be widely reported, wouldn't it? I'd have thought so. I, you know, I'd, I, I was, I'd forgotten about that. You're right. It, was, it wasn't just about the kind of anti-military stuff. It was, it was broadened that. Mm. But, but I think my basic point stands that if you are putting into the public domain information over which you don't have the full picture necessarily, but where you are being judge and jury about what is in the public interest, when it does involve people's lives, and does... I agree with your point about, you know, people who've done wrong should be punished, but there should... And the processes for that should be working. And maybe he feels that they don't, and that's why he had to act this way. I mean, they don't. I mean, that is it. The US military was involved in a huge cover-up. And that, that is why I think there is right on his side. I can't mm. say everything, everything mm. was correct. I'd, I'd quibble myself about bits, but... I think he was a f more of a force for good than he was for bad. Yeah. Mm. And he, but he's, done, he's, he's effectively done 12 years. And, look, in the, in the UK, it's very quite simple. Uh, Belmarsh is <laughs> a furiously expensive place to hold somebody. I don't know why he was in a high-security uh, prison which you normally hold uh, terrorists and more serious offenders. But, Why he couldn't have been somewhere uh, lower grade, which well, would also part, be cheaper? Pa partly because he had become this, this political figure mm. by choice, but through campaigning, yeah. and because he, of the associations that he held, I'm imagining. But I guess the, Amer the, the Americans have done some kind of deal mm. to get it off their plate, to get mm. it off Britain's plate. In a way hey, look, right. Tr Tr Trump was pr originally yeah. pro him, and he was very sympathetic to Trump mm. himself. He was very hostile to Hillary Clinton. Uh, because she'd been the US Secretary yeah, of, right. uh, of State. He was very, very pro-Trump. Uh, there you go. Also, he and his supporters were also... Me. Yeah, he and, <laughs> I know, I've triggered him. Uh, he, he and his supporters were also criticised for going easier on Putin. Shall uh, we... Um... Hey, look, 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 you know, he did 12 years, but Pamela Anderson did visit him, so, you know, so there's, a, there's a balance with these things, isn't there, really? <laughs> uh, yeah, it couldn't we... get any worse, could it? Yeah. Shall we um, <laughs> uh, turn our attention to matters uh, here? <laughs> so, the Daily Telegraph this morning says Scotland Yard has been accused mm. of leaking the identities of Conservatives implicated in the general election betting scandal. And the paper's also been told a further five police officers are under investigation by the Gambling Commission, the industry watchdog, for placing bets on the date of the general election. should say that in a statement, the Met, say the allegations that the Met leaked the information, are simply untrue. This is getting murkier, isn't it, Andrew? Look, they, the Met as an organisation can say that, but they can't say whether an individual in the police force or, or, or an employee of the Met leaked it. Because, I mean, of course I, the Met as a, an organisation wouldn't leak it, but it doesn't surprise me to read that the police are involved in this because they've got quite a lot of history of leaking. And five other ones under investigation, one suspended already. Yes. I have to say, though, if a copper was suspended for leak, for placing a bet, you wonder why the Tory MP, who we know placed a bet, that's Craig Williams, who was the Prime Minister's Prime Minister. still running around on the campaign trail. still not suspended. Because I mean, there's no dispute about that. Others, we're not sure if they did or they didn't. You've got to let the... But that one in particular, he should have been suspended as well. Look, the gambling industry will be pleased because uh, the finger of suspicion was being pointed at them. It's now yeah. got the police. But this is secondary. Who, who leaked is secondary to actually what went on? And we now well, we know two Tory candidates, unsuspended, uh, are under investigation. You have the campaign manager of the uh, Conservatives. You also have the data manager. 
and then you have the police officer. I think we should be told, we actually should be told in black and white whether other candidates and people involved in that campaign are involved. You because say, it's it's yeah. the middle of an election. I think the Gambling Commission. Have right told, to I think the Gambling Commission have said there are no other ministers involved. And I, as we said yesterday, I don't think there would be ministers because only four knew about the timing of the election. The, yeah, but the point, the point about police and and that stuff. You see, a lot of stuff gets heard mm, yeah. in the back of cars. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, none of us know how this has come out. Very, few, I know. I've been involved in calling election timings. Right. Very, you keep that very, very tight. But people hear and people listen, and that seems to me is what happens. But I honestly think the way that Sunak has handled this. You know, yesterday I saw he was he was absolutely furious again. Mm. Exactly the same words that Boris Johnson used about the parties in the Allegra Stratton video. I'm absolutely furious to discover this is going mm. on. <clears throat> if he was furious. He'd call them in, the ones that we know about, did you place a bet, yes or no? Binary, yes or no, did you? Nothing to do with the Gambling Commission. And then they're out. Shall we have a listen to what Rishi Sunak said? This was uh, never mind the ballots uh, leader debate <laughs> held by The Sun. Do you think he's rung everybody who might have had the information and asked them directly? He's hiding behind no. the process. They're, uh, as ever, they're hiding behind process. Let's wait for Sue Gray. Let's <laughs> wait for the Gambling Commission. We're in the middle of an election. He's got two candidates who are suspected of what could be a criminal offence. One, one who was his parliamentary aide, his eyes and ears, his bag carrier in Parliament. He's coughed. He's put his hand up. He has. He was gonna, he's going to win 500 quid. He put 100 quid on five, five to one. Miraculously got it right. <laughs> And he's still there as a candidate. Why is he still there as a candidate? Because he still have hopes of winning and, that seat. The Bristol is... one is a no hopper. It... But he'd be frightened, he'd be frightened that there'll be other candidates who've done the same. And, and... then he have to begin suspending them all in his dominoes, the old... And although the, although the name will stay on the ballot paper, you still can't hide behind that, because uh, no. he, the, yeah. the one who's admitted it should have been suspended on the spot. Mm. Um, the, well... the, the, you say that the pol <laughs> it, it, if the police had leaked the information... Well, the... Police, police people. I mean, it's not... A, as a body, I'm saying, it wouldn't be the men. Yeah, but that you're saying that's a secondary um, issue. But The Telegraph points out, if it emerges, in their opinion, if it emerges that police did leak the names of suspects, the implications could be disastrous because it means that the force may be accused of interfering with the outcome of the election itself. Yeah, and the, and the Telegraph's really worried its side is losing, because <laughs> uh, it is the Tory graph, and, <coughs> le and the leaks didn't come to the Telegraph. Come on, I mean, I've, I've just been here yeah, in the yeah, media yeah. many times. Yeah. They uh, went to The Guardian, they went to the BBC, they went elsewhere. They, they wouldn't be at all upset if the leaks had come to the Telegraph. Um, They'd be going, yeah, great, we I, have fantastic I, I, th I think, stories. to be honest... The, to the Tories were <laughs> yeah. losing the election before the yeah, well, rap over the, yeah. the, the, Met, the Met should also <laughs> point out the Met say they are not currently carrying out any other criminal investigations relating to mm. alleged betting offences linked to the election. No, but that's because the Gambling Commission is looking at this yes. flurry of bets that there were. So yeah. that could that could lead anywhere. But the, but I think the the point about this is the reason why this is so toxic for the Tories is because it speaks to this sense of entitlement that we've seen right through their period. And I think the reason that... I think Kevin's right, the reason The Telegraph are doing that is they're trying to blame anybody but the Tories. And the fact is, the Tories now are reduced virtually to a kind of voter suppression strategy. Don't vote, because Labour might win too big. We've gone from, we've gone from stop don't, the vote... What? The Tories well, aren't is, saying don't vote. They're essentially saying... No, they're not. They're Susanna, saying vote. Let me explain. Because, then, let me explain their strategy. What? They're talking about this supermajority thing. Sorry, I there's feel like no, I'm being treated as a child. Sorry, there's no such... Well, that's because I'm in Jordan's book. Yeah, exactly. Book. <laughs> 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 he's, he's trying to promote... Look, if you're oh, a child, there's a book. That's the secondary school one. You're a primary school one. Sorry. right, in primary colours... That's for you, Susanna. Thank you. So let me explain. Let me tell you what I think they're doing. This supermajority has no meaning in our constitution, none. Why are they talking about a supermajority? They're talking about a supermajority because they want people to think Labour have already won a landslide, so you don't need to vote to get us out. Keep their base, drive down the turnout, and they won't do as badly as they might, according right. to the poll. That's it. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure that's what they're saying. That's mm. what that's you not, think they're saying. That's their strategy. I think that they still want people to vote. Mm. I haven't heard any Tory on this 
programme saying, please well, don't be vote. Very please, anyway, but, but, that would but, be but, bizarre. But look, well. it's, it's all fine, because James Cracknell came to the rescue for the Tory party yesterday, didn't he? You, you can't know, play he, this at six in the morning. We, we can, but oh, we, we, a bit of bleeping involved. Okay. Just point uh, out, he is a Tory candidate. James, Cangra is, uh, James Cracknell is a Tory candidate in Colchester, and, of course, we all know him as the former Olympic rower. Mm -hmm. Bit of a national treasure, absolutely incredible uh, sportsman. Uh, here he is, a recording of video on Facebook uh, to his uh, hopeful voters. Two weeks out from the Olympics, and if we are competing against the Conservative Party, my teammates and I would be saying, they are a shower of <laughs> And if one of my teammates got caught for cheating, they'd be dead to me. Oh, God. Um... I mean, what's going on, Andrew? <laughs> What is going on? Honest to God. Well, I mean, I, no, I don't know him very well. Look, he, he's, he's one of the sort of celebrity Tory candidates in this election. Double Olympic gold medalist. Army, it was in the army. He's in Colchester, an army garrison town. Tory majority of 9,000. But conspicuously, the candidate, the, the guy who was the MP, stood down because mm. he obviously thought it was looking bad. He's obviously decided the campaign is so terrible, he's disowning it. But if you look at quite a lot of Tory election literature, mm. it doesn't mention the Prime Minister, uh, and tries not to say too colour. much about the Tories. Yeah. He's, he's, Sometimes they're using the colour green like, rather than... Some red. He's not wrong, though, is he? Cracknell. He's, but, but, he's, but, he signed up for what he thought was a, an easy win, and he can now see it, uh, you know, the tide going out. But I love the fact he there says it's a, <laughs> it's, a, it's a shower of the word he used, but he still goes on to say, but it's still the best way forward. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, look, it's not. Yeah, no. Shall we just point out all of the candidates yeah. who are standing <laughs> in the um, Colchester who, election? Who, who just... all agree with James Crackle? <laughs> <laughs> Go, Pam. So, um, right, let's, uh, let's talk about uh, immigration. Of course, mm. Nigel Farage wants to make this the immigration election, the uh, Tories want to make it about illegal immigration because we are speaking to the Minister for Illegal Immigration. I, mean, I find it remarkable that there <laughs> even is a Minister for Illegal Immigration. Yeah. It's a huge issue for people, Andrew. Look, it is, and so is legal migration, because it's too high. Uh -huh. uh, the, I remember Cameron promising tens of thousands, and I think last year, was it 700? 685,000, Something I think. like that, yep. yeah. Net and, migration. But actually, if you've legal taken the number of people who came in, it was over a million. Because you've got to take take off that figure of the people who left. Yeah, we, talk, well, we only talk about net migration, yeah, of course, but it, that's the look, number of people. Too many people are coming in, uh, and there's too many people crossing the channel, and the, all the, the Tories stop the boats policy. That's what Cam, the, Sunak is clinging to. Can I just po point out, you're supposed to be the... Yeah, the, I am. <laughs> ..the look, Conservative voice I, I just out well. of our, our guests well. this no, morning. No, look, <laughs> I, I think Rwanda's the best they've got, and it will be abandoned immediately by Labour when they get in. Right. And I think Let's Sunak's got a point. Th th they'll be cheering on the beaches of... Uh, exactly. Calvary. Let's listen to what Rishi Sunak said uh, when he was interviewed last night on Never Mind the Balance. Well, Kevin, I mean, that's going to scare people, isn't it? Look, it, sa it sounds horribly, horribly desperate. Rwanda was always a very expensive gimmick, invented two years ago by Boris Johnson. It's backfired totally. Was it £300 million spent already? There's only a couple of hundred people could go. Hasn't he, hasn't he done his sums and saw there's 30,000 people, people across it? What's That's the deterrent, deterrent when it's they don't one in a hundred chance of going? Mm. If you, and if you go, if you go and you commit a Labour crime, you're sent back, so just Labour take just some matches them all in. and start a fire and you'll be back here. Look, I mean, Labour's just not... going to let them all in. No, that, see, that's stupid and untrue. Let them all yeah. in. It's just not the case. OK, so, Kevin, what is, in your opinion, effective about the Labour proposal? Right, you've got to stop the sailings where you can. Right. You coordinate with the uh, with the French, and then, oh, when, right. then when people not, arrive, not tried that, then. when people arrive, you assess the cases quickly and swiftly. Right, so you've got to get than... more staff in. Yes. So yes. it's going to take time. There's a massive backlog, yes. So there's and... going to be... Cos we've got the summer coming up. Oh, so yep. We're in the middle of summer, right? How many right, appeals the are they allowed? And, and, then... and there are going to be hundreds yeah. and hundreds... I mean, it's how many is, appeals it are they is allowed? a fact yep. that at the moment there are hundreds of people yeah. coming yeah, in there look... and no-one wants to so, see so, those Susanna, so yes, crossing. but you... You're absolutely right, and there was no easy answer. Labour's not pretending it's got any, an easy mm. answer. The Tories did pretend they had mm. an easy answer because they'd shout Rwanda. Mm. And people have seen through it now. They know it is... Well, because no Rwanda it, is take, it, flight has taken it, off. It, it's, it's what James so Cracknell said. So how would it said. work as a... As it, it, no, but deterrent. it is what James Cracknell said. Can I say this? We, on the, the podcast you mentioned, we've been doing these tracker polls week by week, and what's really interesting is among reform voters, this is number one, yeah. OK? Even for Conservatives now, economy and health service are ahead of this in terms of the 
the salience of issue. And with Labour and Lib Dems, this is actually quite low down. Mm. So it's true that Farage wants this to be the immigration yeah. election. But I think for the public, economy and the health service are way ahead of this. And the other interesting thing, I hope Nigel... Alistair, I agree. It doesn't mean it's not an issue for No, I'm people. saying it is an issue. It is an people issue. People can have a lot of different issues on I their totally minds agree. at no, the same my, time. My, my point is that Nigel Farage has had so much attention to this campaign, I think it's been given greater saliency. And interestingly, and by the way, I watched your interview with Farage and thoroughly enjoyed it, he has taken a dive this week. I think that's the most interesting thing in our poll. And I think it's partly because of this rush. Of course, a lot of, because a lot of people say about Alistair Campbell, he was part of a government that massively encouraged immigration from Eastern Europe into this country, and they won't want... But look, look, look uh, which uh, they did. Just, just, which just, they just did. on the issue of immigration, though, and, and economists, will tell, economists will tell you, actually, immigration is coming down. It's not necessarily a good thing for this country. Right? Immigration will need to go. We're seeing what's happening in social Absolutely. care. We're seeing what's happening in public services. What, and on the issue of illegal immigration... A year. And no. on, the, on the issue of illegal immigration, the honesty is that we need to have a better visa scheme and a better system. Mm. And I think a lot of this is seen as being a uh, fire, oh. a flashpoint, for people like Farage and Sunak to be... Can I just say one thing, though? A lot of people of colour were watching Rishi Sunak mm. to come out and say that they are queuing up in Calais. That mm. reminds me of mm. Farage's Breaking Point poster. Mm. They my are parents, my Calais. parents and them? Sunak's parents came from East Calais. Africa, Kenya. At that point, in the 60s, Britain didn't want the British Asians. They wanted to send them back to India or Pakistan, right? And it was only because of compassion in the end and actually mm. human rights cases that were allowed in. Mm. Initially, they only wanted 3,000. Yeah. The fact that Sunak can stand there. Well, he's telling the truth. Up. Well, they my are parents are queued up in... Come they on. are yeah. queuing up. Can I make they one of them? They are queuing up. It's really... They are queuing up. I'm sorry, they are. They're queuing up. Okay. 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 They're okay. queuing up. But, but, Azul, don't you think everybody wants to stop the boats? Because the boats are the dangerous way of coming over... Absolutely, but there's no... But if you were from... Deaths in the channel are heartbreaking But if you are from Iraq, Syria, Afghanistan, you cannot get a visa. So what do you do? In Ukraine, you could pop over to Poland and get a visa Stay in France. It's a nice, safe country. Stay in France. It's a nice, safe country. Why shouldn't they? Why shouldn't they? It's a safe country. It's a safe country. But Britain and Ireland. It's a safe country. Why do they have to come to Britain? Sunak, and back it's, in the 60s, and, and, it's, three, and it's, three it's, it's three times the size of Britain. It's three times the size of Britain. It's a safe country, Andrew. stay there. No. Can I make one other point? Yeah. Your paper was a big part of the, one of the real causes of what's going here. The fact, one of the reasons migration, legal migration, is going up is because loads of the European Union citizens who had to leave because of your bloody Brexit. No. We're now getting... We don't that. use that word so, well, this you, morning. You, all right, bleep. And I'm Brexit. not talking about Brexit. Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. The biggest... No, no, no. Talking no, about... No, seriously, so yeah. you're getting... You're getting, yeah. you're getting yeah. lots and lots of people yeah. coming from Nigeria, yeah. coming from India, coming from, con from countries where we're having to go out to fill the gaps, and that is no. what is driving... The biggest, tree, the biggest upheaval in immigration in the last 20 mm. years is your war. You took us to in Iraq. Oh. It's caused chaos no, in no, the no, Middle no, East. No, no, it's caused a constant... Yes, it has, Alistair. No. It's the whole Middle East has been destabilised ever since. Look, I, your fault. I was, I was, I was, your I, fault. I was against that war, but I don't think you can pin all this on a that lot of war. It. A but lot it, of it. And, and I've fallen out with Alistair more than I've fallen in, but when you say... Um, the expansion of the European Union mm. somehow triggered the big influx. No, it wasn't. It was a fraction. It was a fraction of what it Just is as now. The it boats is now are a fraction of the, of the numbers that are driving up. Post Brexit, is what's Brexit. happened is that the people that you think you were speaking for and defending, they've now got more immigrants. Frankly, Adol's point from countries they didn't expect them to come from anymore. And that's the reality, and that's what we're not talking about in this election. Mm. Um, are we talking about uh, crime? in this election because the Labour Party today want to make a big issue of knife crime. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a target to halve knife crime uh, within a decade. We had the story recently, didn't we, shocked everybody that the two 12-year-olds who were um, convicted of a machete murder, in fact, of um, a, a chap who'd only just come over, a recent immigrant, um, so young, and the youngest since the Jamie Bulger case. Um, Alistair Campbell, how do politicians get on top of something which people are genuinely terrified about and deal with it and, and set a target of halving it? 
Well, by, the, the, I mean, you can have an argument about whether targets are justified. Mm. Tar targets, to me, were always a means by which you could implement policy and then be judged according to the, mm. the, the effectiveness of that policy. But so how do you do it can, you, the, without in policing, stop and search? For in policing, I mean, I think we... You know, another thing that gets talked about very little in this election, I think austerity is a big part of the problems 20, that we're in. 20,000 police officers were cut, of course. Exactly. And, 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 and so, so I, I think that you, 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 this is about a long-term thing where you've got to build up the police, you've got to build up communities, you've got to re build a lot of the damage that's been done and then but I think what you do with a target like that you're signaling priority right. and you're signaling that this is a, a focus for you now and then you've got to bring forward the policy now I think that uh, at least we're talking about that kind of issue I think it is I agree with you I think it's something people are massively worried about but the police ultimately I've done some work with the police federation in the past they feel over the last decade they've been undermined they be, we're seeing it again today in that Telegraph story. Say we, they've been rubbish the whole time, mm. and you know unless we build, rebuild community support for the police and get the police working on behalf of communities, this thing gets worse. Okay. Mm. Quick question: um, If I buy Alistair Campbell talks politics, what what do I understand that I didn't before? Well, you were flicking it through earlier. But Alex is making a lot of lots money. Of things. <laughs> no, 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 he's not, about, he's not about the money. Listen, I'll tell you what, the, I've got to say something now, you're not the target market. This is a book, the one that Adol's looking at is for primary schools, that's for secondary schools. I think we've got a real problem with political education in this country. I think, I'm amazed, if you remember, go back to Brexit, 24th of June 2016, the most Googled question in our country was, what is the European Union? Oh, yeah. This is about trying to say to children, Politics is incredibly important. Mm -hmm. Every, how much your teachers get paid, whether there's a GP near you, whether the transport system works, it's all politics. You all get taught now by your parents, by the media. They're all terrible. They're not all terrible, but you are the next generation. There's a survey out today that says that young people would rather be footballers or gamers than any other job, and I think Prime Minister came pretty much Well, I would definitely... Be, I'd bottom. rather be a footballer as well, um, but... Don't talk, we don't talk about football <laughs> now that the, the best team in Britain uh -oh. are out of the Euros. Uh, the best Claret and Blue team are still in, are still in, the, still in the Premier League and now Champions and the League. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Alex Campbell, thank you very much uh, for joining us and thank you as ever, Andrew and Kevin, a fiery one this morning. And you'll be back at 8.45, you two. Yeah. Alistair, you're not coming back at 8.45. Or today. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think you've back. got other things to do. I have. Um, I have probably but... recording another. The rest is politics. I am at 9 o'clock. I, I am at 9 o'clock. And then I'll be rehearsing for going up against ITV on Channel 4 on election night. Oh, oh, oh yes. But please, no bagpipes. Please, <laughs> please, please. I think if Labour win... <laughs> 30 seats in Scotland, the bagpipes might have to come out. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be 29. Uh. <laughs>